Yo, welcome to another Craftopia guide. In today's guide, I'm going to be showing you guys how to automate iron ore no matter where you are, whether that's on the water, in the sky, basically not needing a bedrock. Now, if this guide does help you, please do drop a like and subscribe. Comment down below with anything that you may need help with. Myself or this amazing community will absolutely help you out. But let's do this. Now, myself and many others like to build bases where maybe ores aren't as accessible such as empty islands, sky bases, etc. Or maybe the bedrock is just so far away from your base that it's a pain setting up a load of automation to bring it on over. So I'm going to show you guys how to completely avoid bedrock, but still have that continuous flow of iron ore coming in. And we're going to do that using crocodiles. But first, let's go through everything we're going to need. And we're going to need some basics like walls and floors. We're then going to need two big pots, two absorbers, six droppers, two breeding facilities, a few conveyor belts. It doesn't really matter how many because it will vary depending on the size you actually want to build this. A marketplace and one steel chest. We're going to start off with our floors. Now I've already pre-built a little platform here, but just make sure you've got a nice amount of space. Now you can build this and then trim it down. But ideally, first of all, you're going to want a nice big space to proper get that build working. Now you're going to want to put your pot somewhere in the middle. It doesn't really matter where, just place it down. We're going to work around the pot. So next, we're actually going to build above. So just come along and place a floor down, pop up. Now you're going to want to build this all the way across. So basically, you've got a platform above and slightly behind your pot, like so. Next, equip a breeding facility and place it so it's facing over the edge. Perfect. Now we're actually going to do that same process again. Next, equip your second big pot and you're going to place it as close to the back of the breeding facility as you possibly can. Now, if you need a bit more space, again, this is going to take up a little bit of space. So I'm going to put a few more floors back here just to make sure I don't run out. Again, we can trim it down at the end if we need but we're going to get the pot as close as possible to the breeding facility. Now we're going to go above again and we're going to do the same thing again, but this time we are going to put a breeding facility, but we're not going to put the pot behind, just the breeding facility behind like so. So now what you have is your breeding facility into a pot to another breeding facility into another pot. I know it's a lot, but it's worth it. Believe me. Next up, we are going to come down to the bottom and we are going to put four droppers on the pot. Now you can put these all in the same spot, but just make sure there's four droppers on the front. You can do them above if you want to make it look a bit different, but you can do them all in one spot and it works just as well. Next, we're going to equip our walls and we're going to place some like so. Now we're actually going to take away this floor and this floor. and We're going to put two conveyor belts in that go off to the side. So what we have is the droppers shooting out, land onto the conveyor belt, bring it to this end platform here. Now, as I mentioned, feel free to compact this down as much as possible. I'm just showing you how the build works and you can make it fit to your base. So next up, I'm gonna equip the chest and I'm gonna put it as close to the gap as I can. So you've just got a little gap between the end of this floor and I'm gonna put an absorber on the back. I'm then going to equip another wall and I'm going to put it along the back there. So what we have is this kind of conveyor belt leading down to this wall at the end. And just to secure it, I'm going to put a wall in there as well. So what we have is this chest here. This is where everything's going to be collected. Next, we're going to come up to our second pot and we're going to put two droppers on the side of this pot. Just like so. And we're almost going to do the same kind of thing again. So we're going to put a wall at the end conveyor about where the flogger is. So the dropper shoots to the wall, conveyor belt brings it to the side. Now, one thing you can do to make sure everything works nice and smooth is actually block off where you don't need anything to go. Because sometimes, even if you have absor absorbers on the other side of the map, sometimes they can actually draw items slightly towards each other. So you wanna put a wall in the way that it will stop that from happening. It doesn't always happen, but you want to minimize the waste. So next up, I'm going to equip the market and I'm going to place it down here. And I'm going to put an absorber on the front of it, just like so. 
Okay, so there we go. Top breeder into a pot with two droppers on the side. Shooting onto a conveyor belt that hits a wall. Then brought into the market to be auto-sold. Behind this pot, we're going to have a breeder that goes into another pot. That has four droppers on the front. That will shoot it to the conveyor belt. The wall to stop it going over. That will bring it down and be stored into this chest here. And as you can see, a lot of this floor is not used. So we can clear some of that out and really compact it down, but we didn't want to run out of space. So the only thing left to get is our monos and our crocodiles. So let's go and do that. Now, the only thing I would recommend for this is to have a low level crocodile. So I'm actually going to go to one of the lowest worlds I can, and just down to a grass area, because I want those crocodiles to die nice and fast. Now, if you're struggling to find a crocodile, just head to the map, and look for any of the dungeons that you may have previously completed. There's always something guard in a dungeon, whether it's a bear or a crocodile. It's very common. Now I can see that this one has a bear. So I'm just going to fly over and check this one over here. And I can already see that there is crocodiles here. Perfect. Now if you tend to one shot things, use like a pickaxe, maybe take your armor off, whatever you can, just to lower that attack damage. We're going to go ahead and get this crocodile nice and weak. Okay, and we're going to equip our prisms. And we're going to catch him. There we go, he's spawned out front again. So, we're going to use my pickaxe again because if I hit him with my weapon, I'm going to I'm going to kill him in one hit. So, we're going to we're going to rely on the pickaxe here. There we go. He's nice and weak. I'm going to catch him too. Great. So, next we just need our monos. So, we're going to head to the center of the map. It has to be green monos. I always forget to mention this in my guides, and a lot of you, uh, a lot of you, then comment saying that the 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 monos are not healing. It has to be green monos. Green monos spread out hills while dying. Now monos are very weak, so you're probably gonna want to use fists if you were killing the crocodiles in one hit. I wouldn't even try the pickaxe really. Just give him a punch. And he's nice and weak already, so I'm just going to go straight for the catch on him. If this werewolf will leave me alone. Okay, we're going to catch this guy. Great, and we need one more. Now, one thing I would recommend is actually getting yourself a lot of monos. Monos are used for all sorts of automations. And it's always handy having them instead of having to come and catch them every time. I do have a stack, but I just wanted to show you guys the process of coming to catch them. But I would actually recommend breeding them, having a nice amount in your base. So let's head back to the base. Now, if you are considering breeding the monos, if you actually get two monos into a pot to heal two more monos, you won't have to keep swapping the monos out or catching the ones back on top. They just forever stay alive. Okay, so we are back at our build and we have two crocodiles and two green monos so let's start with the monos let's bring the mono up top and place one on there let's equip the other mono and put him on this side great that's going to start that process now, if you find that your monos are going in and they're not healing the first breeder, just bring your top breeder forward a little bit. You're going to want the hills to spread out, but the hills do have a wide range, so you should be okay. But when that goes inside, then heals the two monos on top and spreads out the hills. So now we're going to equip our crocodiles. And we're going to put one on there. And one on there. And we're going to let it do its work. So what will happen? A crocodile will be bred. Also healed from the top monos. Pulls into the pot. And it will be cooked alive. Going to come out of the way here so I can show you guys what will happen. And then the reason you put a good amount of droppers is because there's a good amount of loot that actually comes out. And there we go. That is now going to start to be collected up inside that chest. And we can just leave that going. Now, the only thing is, you do get other items too. You get all of the items from the crocodiles. That's okay for maybe the leather and the iron ore, but you don't particularly need any of the other stuff. 
especially once you have a whole bunch of it. So what you can do to help with this problem is maybe have a market next to it and you manually transfer it over or set up a craft connector which will automatically craft the iron ore. I personally like to have a full stack of iron ore, so I don't use a craft connector to a furnace, but you absolutely can. And that will just permanently make you iron bars, which are always useful. But I actually prefer to just leave it like this, and then I like to come over and see that I've got absolute stacks of iron. They will also stack up to 100 stacks, so you can, you can gather a real good amount in there at a time. And if it's filling up more often than you check it, you could put a dropper on this chest to go to another chest, which will mean you've got two chests worth of storage. Do it again, you've got three chests, however you want to do it. But this is how the basics work. So now, wherever I am, as you can see, I'm on an, I'm on an empty island. There is no iron supply here. But I am getting a chest automatically filled with iron. Now... We're going to head back over to this side because what happens is the monos, when they go into the pot, they cook eggs and it will fill up inside the pot. So we have the dropper, which when, when the monos die, will fire it out and it will be taken into the store. So if we head on over to the market, we can see that they're being collected up in here for a little bit of passive money. It's not great money, but it's money. The reason you want to do that is because you don't want the pot to constantly be full because it will then start collecting just up inside the actual pot itself just as floor loot. And you can really start to encounter lag or other problems with that. But here you have an iron supply no matter where you are in the game. The other great thing about this, this isn't regular iron ore. This is dangerous and dangerous crocodiles. Now, if you want to, you could use a washing machine to clean that off and just have them as plain iron. But this dangerous ore here actually gives pretty good stat boost. And you're going to collect up an infinite amount of that. It may seem complicated, but it's actually not. If you think about it, it's just the monos dropping into the pot. They heal anything around it. So similar how we've done the battery farm where you'd have the row of generators along there to keep the animals alive. In this one, it's just keeping those crocodiles alive. But they are actually on a breeder instead, falling into the pot and collecting us up all that lovely iron ore. But as I said, if you guys want to try and compact this, you guys want to make it look a little bit different, there's a lot of wasted floors and stuff around here. You can tidy it right up. You could hide it in a box so that you don't see any of this side and you only have a chest next to a big square. Well, however you want to do it. But I just wanted to show you the mechanics of it and how to make it work. And there we go, you can have as much iron ore as you like without having to do those resource trips as I have to do. I have to constantly go to another island, mine a bunch of iron because I've ran out in my empty island. Now, that problem is solved. Now, I hope this video helped you. If it did, please do drop a like and subscribe. I make guides here every day and I stream here every day too. I actually have a 24 hour stream happening on Friday the 24th where we are going to be doing all kinds of wonderful builds. We've got some in-game giveaways and we can hang out with the best chat on YouTube. So may you be absolutely full up with iron ore, but most importantly, enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace!